Hello my friends, it's our Joshua Collins here, the meeting at City Hall went well. Um, the mayor says he wants to help a homeless woman out here that has so many medical conditions, the shelters don't want to take her. That's one of the reasons I went to speak. And anyways, you'll see the video and his response and everything, but please pray we can get her some help. I called today, his office, he told me to call him, and he wasn't there, wasn't there unfortunately, but hopefully uh, we can get everything uh, working and get her some help. So um, please pray for that. and. And uh, pray this ministry grows and, and uh, many will join in helping the homeless. And if you'd like to join my Facebook group, Homeless Advocates for Christ. And uh, please share this video. And again, just thank you so much for your prayers and support. May God bless you as you seek first his kingdom always. Also, the next city council meeting is August 15th, 5 p.m. at Anaheim City Hall. If you want to come speak or join in the cause, do let me know. Uh, you can also email me at servingjesus99212 at yahoo.com. And um, the more support, the better. Thanks so much. Hello, my name is uh, R. Joshua Collins. I'm the founder of the Facebook group Homeless Advocates for Christ. And as we know, we're in California, an earthquake could happen any time. Uh, this building could collapse and we could all die. And the question is, will you be in heaven or hell when that happens? I encourage everyone to give the life to Jesus before it's too late. Um, Romans 5, verse 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So we, we've all sinned, whether it's lusted or stolen something or lied, whatever it is. We all need a savior, forgiveness of sins, and only Jesus can save us. So I, uh, that's the most important thing for anybody. But the, the next thing, I got a couple issues regarding the homeless. First of all, it just seems like there's a lot of bigots in Anaheim, and they claim that all the homeless are this or that, right? If you attack a whole class of people and say they're all thieves and druggies and this, you're a bigot, you know? We're not all that way. I myself have been homeless for many years as part of my ministry. I don't have drug charges and theft charges and all that kind of stuff. Not every homeless person is the same, so try not to be a bigot and, and don't judge everyone the same. And when you take homeless people's property, uh, you become a criminal yourself. You become a thief. And this law allows for that. And I'm really discouraged, actually, by you, Mayor, Mayor Tate, for what you said about we're not even con based on like, considering repealing this ordinance when it's hurting so many people's lives. So many people have lost their property, their, their medications, and all that. It's like you don't care or something. It's like, not, is that not even an option now? I mean, that's what it sounds like you're saying. And Jose, you ran on the platform that you're going to get this thing repealed, and you're going to fight for that, and now you're, you're kind of, you know, wishy-washy. And Chris and Lucille, you know, I'm really concerned about both you too, you know. It, you need to attack the criminal element, not property, okay? People that are homeless have property. Let them have their property. But if you want to really deal with criminal issues, deal with the drugs, right? Get a dog that sniffs drugs out or whatever. Deal with the criminal activity. Don't deal with someone trying to survive. Now, there's a homeless woman out there, and uh, she's very frail. She has a disease, and she can't even get into shelter because of her condition, right? So what are we going to do about those types of people? That's the question I have for you guys. Also, I've called CityNet. They don't get back to me. And uh, uh, th th this homeless woman needs help. Anyways, she's out there. If you can do anything to help her, let me know. Um, you know, she's, she's very frail. Uh, she's been peeing blood, she said and the shelters, for whatever reason, because of this condition that she has, she gets seizures, stuff like that, they won't let her in. So we got people out there like that, and then you wanna go take their property and say, oh, we'll just keep taking the property, and we're not gonna repeal nothing, and just keep things as it is. You know, that's really a shame. You guys can do better than that. If you guys really wanna be kind and all that, and say you're a city of kindness, you have to do better than that, or else you're just a hypocrite. Thanks for your time.
offering services to the individuals. Officers must provide the opportunity for the individual to leave the area and must offer an available shelter housing services before a citation may be considered. The individual must clearly refuse to avail him or her or themselves of an available uh, convenient shelter housing option. Documentation of specific shelter housing space offered and a subject's refusal is required for any citation. So, uh, policy of the police department, I've done that sort of that, that people are offered a available shelter uh, before any citation is issued. So, um, that's that's a policy that if we're not familiar with that, that's not a violation of policy. Either. But I, that is part of, of this uh, ordinance, the enforcement of this ordinance. So, it, it addresses what, you, what you're speaking to it. And, and, and I also appreciate your point that when people speak about the homeless, there, there, is a, uh, there might be a criminal element. Sometimes people are lumped together, and the criminal element needs to be deal, dealt with as a criminal element. Exactly. And, uh, homeless people who are uh, find themselves out of luck or have uh, maybe uh, issues, mental issues, or uh, things like that can be treated with uh, humanity and, and we need to help all those folks. So I appreciate that. I, I really glad you said that. Uh, Sometimes the criminal says not the homeless, uh, and they oftentimes they refer to the criminal's uh, element, which is a criminal element, regardless of your homeless or not homeless. Exactly. I appreciate okay. those, uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Collins, if your friend is frail and she's bleeding, she needs to be in the hospital, and you know that an ER room cannot turn her down. So she doesn't need to be in the shelter, she needs to get medical care. So take her to one of the hospitals. And they will take care of her. Well, That's what it's available for. she's back out there, so she can't stay there forever in these hospitals. She needs actual living place. Well, you tell me she's bleeding. We are, you know, we're getting too, too far off point, but uh, I'm just saying that the homeless is not the only but, but remember, Mayor, too, this is selectively enforced, this ordinance. That's the problem with it, too. spoken why there was protest at Disney, but I'd like to talk about how Disney reacted to our free speech. On July 14th, I and many others attended a sleep out in front of Disneyland, bringing attention to uh, the low wages that they're being paid here in Anaheim. All night, the mouse hid in his compound and refused to come out and confront us. Around 12 a.m., after three hours of demonstrating, the mouse decided to become a sneaky rat and turn the sprinklers on the demonstrators. The mouse continued to turn the sprinklers on and off until 2 a.m., when finally everyone left. We may have gotten our signs wet, but the damage has already been done. I'd like to thank the Anaheim Police Department for not bothering us and letting us do our demonstration peacefully, especially when the former police, of Chief, former police chief of Fullerton has said the beating of Kelly Thomas wasn't that bad, is now the head of security at Disneyland. Okay, Anaheim is a city that continues to choo chooses to continue to criminalize homelessness to make money off of city net monopolies. Because of this, there are now things that homeless people cannot do, but non-homeless people can do. Today, I have brought a list of those things, and I'm going to begin. First with no peeing and pooping. <laughs> people who are not homeless that have toilets can use the bathroom whenever they please. That is not the case for the homeless, which are limited on where they can go to the bathroom and when they can go. There's not many public restrooms that are open 24 hours a day. Because of this, they use the bathroom in the streets and criminalize because of it. But I ask you, what are they supposed to do? Hold it in? Did you know you could damage your colon and possibly die from it by not uh, taking a poop every day? No showers. People are, who are not homeless that have showers can shower whenever they please. Again, this is not the case for the homeless, who have no public place to shower, and unfortunately, because of that, they are smelly and dirty, but unless they pay you know, $35 a month for a gym membership, that's the only way I can see they can find a place to shower. No cooking. People who are not homeless can barbecue whenever they want, but people who are homeless uh, get the fire department called on them, and uh, their barbecue put out and, uh, and are forced to eat uh, uncooked and usually raw food. No camping. People are 
who are not homeless go on camping trips to have fun and relaxation. But when the homeless do it to survive, they are criminalized and have their property confiscated and sometimes destroyed. No, no affordable housing. Now I'm thinking down the road here after these homeless people have gotten help. Let's take a look at some listings. Irvine, uh, 2,200 square feet of living space, $1,018,000. A little pricey. Let's go to Santa Ana, $519,000. So unless we can fix these problems, the homeless are never going away. Hundreds of millions of dollars. This is money that is not going into the general fund to benefit the residents of this city. And in return, Disney, a billion dollar company, has repaid us with poverty wage jobs directly contributing to the homeless problem in this city and this county. And even worse, Disney does not care. They don't care that they pay slave wages. They don't care that their employees are homeless. They don't care that there is no affordable housing to house their 30,000 employees. They don't care that the homeless can't even sit on a bus bench to take a rest. They don't care about the Disney employee who was heading home 30 miles away after working 16 hours at two different jobs who might like to sit down while waiting for the bus. They do not care about the homeless in the riverbed because, God forbid, people running their marathon might see the homeless in the riverbed. My mom, who's 78 years old, always told me to be careful. Be careful who you associate with because you are judged by the company you keep. Well, you are all being judged by your association with Disney, and you are coming up as uncompassionate and lacking in human de decency. This is a global perception as many of the recent actions in this city, such as the Disney protests and the removal of the bus benches, have gained worldwide attention. It is time to cut the cord that ties Disney to our city coffers. It is time to force them to stand on their own. It is time to stand up for the residents of the city, both the housed and the unhoused. It is time to house the homeless. It is time to build affordable housing for the less fortunate. And it is time to build affordable housing for the Disney employees because everybody knows that Disney won't do anything. Life at Anaheim was anything but magical outside the gates of Disneyland. The Orange County Register in a front page article pointed out a resident's joy that her street had regained streetlights. How sad is this? Why would her street not have streetlights to begin with? I don't understand it. Every day my mom, when I talked to her, she asked me, what's happening in the city of kindness today? Every day I tell her about the latest horrible actions against the homeless. I tell her about the stealing of their belongings, how they lose paperwork, photos, prescriptions, things that are irreplaceable, how they lose clothing, sleeping bags, tents. And she says, this needs to stop. So I say, this needs to stop. The confiscation needs to stop. You would all do well to remember the words of the Dalai Lama. Our prime purpose in this life is to help others. Ms. Robbins, I'm sorry your time's up. And if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. Thank you. Yeah. Are more likely to have behavioral problems, more or less well in school, and eventually even drop out. Only one in four people who qualify for HUD assistance actually receive it. And who are these lucky ones out of the four uh, people that get there? 36% of those are elderly, 24% have some type of physical disability, 35% are families with children. And the challenges that they face are that there are only a 35 affordable units for every 100 available uh, in our national uh, average of extremely low income in our households. So this means that about 71% of uh, these low income uh, renters also spend more than 50% of their income on rent. Uh, people who have an affordable home are able to spend five times more money on health care three times more on nutrition. Uh, federal assisted the homes uh, improve health outcomes by helping people recover from substance abuse, chronic, and chronic diseases. Uh, kids can also avoid environmental health issues because of the standards, and also people with mobility issues have an accessible place to live. Now in regards to item number 16 on tonight's agenda, uh, as commissioner I did vote uh, in favor to, to uh, uh, send that to you. Um, and I ask that you approve item 16. Uh, uh, the uh, fiscal year 2017-2018 
annual uh, 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 was it the A and B? <laughs> I forgot right now. Anyway, uh, uh, I recommend the uh, council uh, do so as well as far as voting on the uh, uh, the plan. Now, I was surprised at the lack of consistent participation in the process. Uh, you provide affordable housing. Sir, uh, yes, sir. something in the newspaper about uh, a guy who cleaned the streets at Disneyland when he was making $35 an hour. So obviously over the period of time, he's been working there since the beginning uh, when Disneyland opened, uh, Disney had it built into the program that everybody should make a, a good living wage and, uh, and be part of Anaheim and part of the, uh, the prosperity of Anaheim. But uh, that obviously changed with the corporate uh, control of it and they, they turned it around and they turned it against us, uh, turned us into a banana republic. Of course, um, you know, we're talking about the homeless people, and we've given you all the numbers, and uh, a homeless person dies every 36 hours, and we still want this ordinance redacted. Uh, it saddens me to think that anyone among you, uh, considering the facts, that, that the homeless population has doubled, that the people are dying on the streets, that uh, any policy that injures our fellow man uh, should be redacted. We've given you the numbers, we've given you all the facts as far as I can, I can say. I don't know how much more we can give you, but one plus one equals two. And the camping ordinance equals pain, suffering, and death. Uh, it, it really has to go at some point before we have to uh, change this completely. Uh, they need, at this particular time, they need help. They need have to bring them facilities, bathrooms, showers, services, and basic necessities. That's what the people need. Um, I don't want to see anybody else die on the street on our, on our watch. That's our goal. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to change things. Change comes now. Please help. Woohoo! I read this earlier, but it, uh, the policy under the ordinance is that uh, Officers must provide the opportunity for individuals to leave the area so if somebody's camping in the park before a citation is issued, the policy is that officers must provide an opportunity for the individual to leave the area and must offer an available shelter housing services before a citation may be considered. The individual must clearly refuse to avail him, her, or themselves of an available convenient shelter uh, or housing option. Documentation of the specific shelter housing space offered by it, and the subject's refusal is required before any citation is issued. So, so I'm just curious: Are you saying that this is not being followed, or are you? Because this seems not only is it not being followed, but um, we'll we'll uh, we'll talk more. About Selective it. enforcement. Uh, trust me, the city Why do they do that to everybody, not just the homeless? Everything, very sure. The, um, you know, this is not being followed. There's no place for them to go. Uh, they refuse services 100% because but they don't trust the system yeah. in place. We are talking about the anti-camping ordinance, and before anyone is able to issue a citation, they are, and it's supposed to be documented with the uh, body worn cameras that they are um, offered a shelter and it's refused. Uh, then and, and, and you're saying that's not, not you're saying the policy is not being followed. Then the policy clear. is not being followed. You have to redact the policy. It doesn't work as it stands. It's proven that it doesn't work. No, uh, well, this is a policy, and if, if it's not being followed, that's a different issue than the policy is Yeah. Uh, that's what I'm trying to. So, so we have to speak to the police about this. No, I'm just I'm, I'm curious. Uh, Some of the homeless have died because they did not have water. You know, this camping ordinance does not work. It's failed. What do we do before then? Things to talk, as talk and act as people who are going to be judged by the laws that bring freedom. 
No mercy will be shown to those who show no mercy to others. Mercy comes over judgment. This camping ordinance is discriminating the homeless and is unconstitutional. Especially the confiscation of property. The police have not have overreached that. And that paper that you read, they don't care about that. All they care about is pushing people off and on from one place to the other, which has caused oppression on these people, which has caused mental illness because depression leads to mental illness. When people are already in down and out, and they get kicked out of that. That's what causes that. There are solutions that have not been implemented that could work even on a trial basis, we could try. There are solutions that we have given. Instead of just leaving them out there, throwing them from the trail to the park to now to, you know, where are they going to go next? The streets? Well, the streets is going to be very difficult for you to, to actually put them in jail because they're public. And that's where they're going to be going next, if they keep getting pushed from one end to the other. This is, uh, this has not worked. It has made things worse. We're not saying, you know, people are not camping in, in the parks just because they're laying a, a you know, a towel or, or something just to sit there. Well, that's what parks are for. They're not pinching tents. That's what the riverbed is for. Last year, year before, I used to be told that safe zones will never happen. Well, they're there at the riverbed. It's not exactly what we want because we do have a structure that Nancy West has been putting out. Our fresco gardens were just structured with bathrooms, showers, and storage, and security, where they will be alleviating them from being right there at the trail. That lot right is right there. They keep getting thrown out of there. You know, I talk to uh, Mr. to Caltrans, and they're sympathetic, but they have you know when they throw them out of there, they're they're getting pushed to one to the La Palma Park and La Palma Park. The police come and, and actually oppresses them, which they go closer to the neighborhood. Thank you. And I wasn't sure if I was going to come today, and I'm still sit, sitting here trying to figure out what I'm going to say. I like your hair, Lucille. Let's get on in. Today is, well, yesterday was the anniversary of five years of me coming here to talk to you. My son, Joel, was killed on July 22nd. 2012 by officers Phillips, Lambert, and Pham. First time I came here was to get answers. I'd like that you're paying attention, Chris and Maureen, you didn't used to. Um, came here for answers, never got them. I came here for accountability, you know, with an outside investigation. Mr. Mayor, I know you asked for a federal investigation. I, I don't know whatever happened to that. Maybe, maybe you don't know either. Um, Joey's dead. He's not coming back. I haven't been here asking for accountability for him, but I have been talking to a lot of you for accountability with our officers that we have now. And it's not about hating cops or being anti-cop because I'm not. I mean, I used to work at the parole office. How, you know, how could I be anti-cop? But we need better officers with better training, better policies, so people, you know, will stop being killed by them. You know, I, I'm i asking you to, I mean, it was supposed to be on the, on the agenda tonight, but it's not. I'm really asking you to consider having a real police oversight with subpoena powers, 
because even if you know we don't need it, it's there. Um, you know, I've I feel a lot of shame because I've been coming here for five years to try to make some changes, and I can't look at Vincent Valenzuela's family without feeling shame because he was tasered to death and that shouldn't have happened. Monique Decker, seeing her family too, I couldn't, it was really hard to face them. I, I feel like, you know, I, I, I'm not bringing my son back. That's not why I'm here. I want people to stop being killed by our police. And that's all I'm asking you is, you know, I wasn't gonna cry. I like Lucille's hair. <laughs> you know, there was there was a register article. I don't know if you guys read it. You know, I'm gonna keep talking. I'm gonna ask for another minute. You can cut me off if you want. There was a register article about five years later. Um, thank you. We have street lights. I'm, I'm glad you you know we have this. You know, we can call you up. But five years later, in street lights, that's not accountability for our police officers. Um, you know, that article was supposed to be about the changes, you know, mine and Genevieve's son were killed and the, many others before, many others after, and it turned into district elections in this, you know, the People's Council. And, you know, I'm glad things are changing in that way, but, a people's council needs more than to have conversations. You know, it's been almost a year and it's just conversations about, you know, how we can fix things, how, you know, grow a ball, you know, like, do something. You know, I'm, I'm sorry, but, you know, it's hard to see these families and know that you know, it's going to keep happening, and those children have to grow up without their dad. I mean, he, he was living at, in Maxwell Park. He was, you know, he had mental issues, and he's dead, and they don't have a dad, and it's, it's not changing. Thank you. Thank you. church in the city of Anaheim. Uh, our church is located uh, near Euclid and Catella. Uh, just across the car wash. We have Sunday service every Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. We offer prayer for healing and miracles. Uh, so if anybody needs a special prayer, you know, sometimes doctors give up people, but we still have hope in Christ. Jesus Christ, the scripture says in Hebrews 13 verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God changed the known. Jesus Christ is still alive and well. He is still in the healing ministry. He is still delivering the people. So I just want to welcome the whole city of Anaheim to our church uh, every Sunday morning. Uh, if you if you would like to know uh, more about uh, this church, you can visit our website restorationfire.com. Restorationfire.com. I just want to read uh, one scripture from Philippians chapter two, starting from uh, verse five. Let this mind be in you, which was which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it a robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, 
taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross therefore god also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god the father the days are coming jesus is coming back very soon all the signs all the world problems we face today pointing to the coming back of the lord jesus christ sir i'm sorry your time is up and uh, i thank you for uh, allowing permitting me to speak god's word here i appreciate you all very much god bless you all thank you Um, this is a song I wrote, uh, I've been over 10 years on the streets with the homeless as part of my missionary work, you could say, for the Lord, so, um, yeah, I know firsthand knowledge, what's hap like, what it's like to be homeless and uh, to experience the police harassment, police arrests, jail, um, all that, you know, so, uh, this song is dear to my heart, uh, the homeless are dear to my heart. I am thankfully I'm in a church now as a worship leader and, and um, have a somewhere to go now but for years that wasn't so and um, but God opened that door for me recently so I thank God for that but uh, still I'm always thinking about the homeless and trying to defend their rights and be there for them so anyways this song is about two homeless people uh, that I'm sure some of you can relate to and uh, I'll go ahead and start some it's called Jesus Hold Me it's also um, on YouTube thank you Oh, also, uh, if you want, you can join my Facebook group, Homeless Advocates for Christ. And I also have a YouTube channel, it's just r.joshuacollins. Okay, so we'll go ahead and start this song. He had a backpack on his back. Just got up from the railroad track you know, It's been a hard life on the road Just laid off, nowhere to go He said, I don't have the American dream No fancy cars, but Jesus holds me And I know what lies ahead of me Cause heaven knows I love the Lord She shed a tear, she said, I don't have the American dream, no fancy cars, but Jesus holds me, and I know what lies ahead of me, cause heaven knows I love the Lord.
Okay, folks. One more time. This is the 10-year plan for in homelessness in Orange County.